I today have five uh, true false statements for you. I encourage you to stop video here, uh, read uh, the statements, answer them and then you can run video again and compare your answers with my answers and explanations. And here is the first statement. Uh, proteins whose primary function is to destroy or neutralize foreign substances are called enzymes and uh, indeed there are some enzymes uh, whose primary function is to fight uh, foreign uh, say DNA we call them restriction enzyme and foreign RNA we call them also RNA restriction enzyme and there are also some uh, enzymes uh, like uh, proteases whose primary function to uh, destroy foreign proteins and its own uh, proteins also uh, when it's for example misshaped uh, but there also exists the whole group of proteins that we call antibodies uh, who is uh, destroy and neutralize foreign substances and this is the uh, primary function and primary function of the enzymes um, um, speeding up of the uh, metabolic processes and um, so we have to answer this question or statement as false because uh, antibodies is more suitable answer and uh, next um, statement a person whose blood contains the antibodies A and antibody B would be of the blood type O and before I would uh, give you an answer, I want to explain you four different blood types uh, that is possible. And um, imagine that this is a red blood cell. And on the surface, we would have antigens A present. So we call this blood group A. And um, other blood group would be blood group B. And on the surface of the red blood uh, cells, we would have antigen B present. And we call this group blood group B. And also we would have uh, the third group that is uh, have both uh, antigen A and antigen B present on the surface of the red blood cell. So we call this group uh, AB blood group and the fourth blood group would be O when we don't have any antigens present here so we call this group uh, O and for example uh, blood group A uh, would have in its serum uh, antibodies B so we cannot use for transfusion uh, blood group B because this uh, uh, antibodies would fight uh, this antigens and would destroy uh, this uh, red blood cells. And we also cannot use uh, blood group AB for transfusion because these antibodies would fight these antigens here. But we can use uh, blood group O because there is no antigens present here. So for transfusion we can use only its own blood group A and blood group O. Let's now consider blood group B. In the serum of the blood group B uh, would be present uh, antibodies A. So we cannot use blood group A for transfusion because uh, antibodies uh, A would fight this antigens A present on the surface of the red blood cells. We cannot use also uh, for transfusion blood group AB because um, antigens A here present but we can use um, blood group O because there is no antigens here. Once again, just like in previous example we can use for transfusion its own blood group and blood group O. And as for the blood group AB, uh, we call them uh, universal recipients because there is no um, antibodies A or antibodies B present here. 
so we may have uh, a transfusion from any blood type with A, B or O and as for the blood group O in the serum we would have uh, antibodies A and B present that's why uh, this blood group is universal uh, donor but can uh, can uh, be as recipient only from its own blood group and none of the other three blood groups and now we can answer um, st the statement whether it's true or false and as you see uh, blood group O have uh, antibodies A and B present so the answer would be A true and the next statement genes always exist in two forms or alleles and uh, for example we are deployed organism we have two sets of chromosomes uh, 23 chromosomes we got from our mother side 23 chromosomes we got from our father side and um, most of our genes present in two copies but uh, it doesn't mean that only two uh, different alleles may, might exist just like in previous example uh, you see uh, there is, can be three uh, types of alleles that would make all these four uh, different blood groups and with other uh, genes uh, there can be even more alleles present in the gene pool so uh, this uh, statement is false so we have to cross out answer A and our choice is answer B and next statement a Y-linked trait is passed down from the father to half of his sons but none of his daughters and um, before I would answer this question let me draw a Punnett square in order to explain so imagine that we have a father who is uh, have defective Y chromosome and here would be his wife who is going to be XX so this side going to be female side and this side is going to be male side and now we can uh, make a Punnett square and as you see here we would have normal female and normal female here and here we would have uh, affected male and affected uh, male here also so because uh, uh, Y chromosome passed from the father to sons 100% uh, of the sons would be affected with this genetic disorder and 100% of the daughters wouldn't be affected so um, as long as in our statement we have that uh, half of his sons uh, would be affected this statement is not true because 100 percent of the sons would be affected with this genetic disorder so this statement is false and last statement is uh, hemophilia is an x-linked trait if woman who is a carrier marries a normal man the proportion of the male offspring that would be expected to have a hemophilia is one half and once again in order to answer this question let me build a Punnett square so here we would have a normal male and a female who is going to be carrier so I would use X chromosome uh, with red color that is going to be defective and uh, with white color normal chromosome and once again this is going to be a female side and this is going to be a male side and now we build a Punnett square 
and now we would be able to see what kind of progeny they might have. So here we would have uh, one defective chromosome from the mother side and one normal chromosome from the father side and here we would have two normal chromosomes one from the mother side and another one from the father side and here we would have one defective X chromosome and one normal Y chromosome and here once again one normal X chromosome and one normal Y chromosome so uh, according to this Punnett square we see that 50% uh, of the males would be affected with this genetic disorder and uh, you also see that 50% uh, of the females would be carriers as long as this uh, genetic disorder is recessive and uh, females possess uh, one normal X chromosome uh, phenotypically they are going to be normal and um, the other 50% would be normal for both X chromosomes and now we can give an answer for this statement that is give us uh, uh, tell us that 50% uh, of the male uh, offspring would be affected with this genetic disorder and that is true that's all for today thank you for attention please subscribe to my new video that I post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video uh, write your comments Goodbye.